You know, as I was uh, listening to that song, I was thinking, yeah, this month is all about testimonies. Jaden alluded to that earlier. But why? Why do we need to share our testimonies? And uh, it really hit me that life is, life is but a vapor. Do we really believe that? That's the question. Do you really believe that your very next breath could be your last breath? Um, I mean, I can stand up here all day and share testimony after testimony after testimony of people who I have known who have been here today, and then the very next day, they're not. And so our testimonies, we should have a sense of urgency as a church. We carry a very important message. Use it. Like, go and tell it. That's, that's what we're commanded to do. That's what we're commissioned to do. Um, that's what we're called to be obedient to do. And so, uh, you have a very important story to share if, only if, you've repented of your sins and believed that Jesus took away your sins by the power of the cross and the resurrection. And so I'm going to invite truly all of us, including myself, to share your story, to share your story and, and ask whoever you're sharing with if they have a story like that. Don't just make it about yourself, but it can be super brief. Let me teach you. So this is, this is it. This is called a 15-second testimony. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, thank you, Jaden. Okay, so there was a time in my life... That's, that's the very first thing that you can start out with. There has to be a period of time where you were not living with Christ. If not, then we truly need to talk. But there was a time in my life where I was broken and anxious. Whatever words describe your time in your life, whatever was going on in your life, maybe you were really struggling with a season of anxiety, uh, maybe you were depressed, maybe you were just living a cultural Christianity identity. Uh, statistics say 79% of all of adults in Oklahoma claim to be Christians. And that's kind of a shocking statistic that I read uh, last week. And it really made me dive deeper into that. I was like, well, okay, that might be the, that, that truly might be the case. They might check a, a questionnaire, but are they truly following Christ? Because if we're truly following Christ, then we need to be obedient to what God's word tells us to do. What does God, God's word tell us to do? Go. Right? Go. Make disciples. Make disciples. And so, back to, back to the 15-second uh, testimony. There was a time in my life where I was anxious, where I was broken, where I was living in sin. And then I met Jesus. A pastor shared with me, you're not kind of, right? You're not kind of saved. And so I repented of my sins, and I started following Christ with all of my identity. I placed all of my trust and hope in him. And I have security and salvation. Do you have a story like that? I know that was longer than 15 seconds if you were counting. But that's just a way to bridge the gap. And so my encouragement, including myself, is to share our personal testimonies at least one time this month with somebody. One time. That's it. I'm calling us as a church. Just one time. But you can't begin doing that Unless you've prayed. Unless you've prayed. Unless God has placed that person on your heart. Right? So maybe you just need to sit here today and just pray. Who am I going to share this story with? And then you need to ask yourself. Because scripture tells us that we need to be ready. Ready to give an account for the hope that God has given us. And so you need to ask yourself. Do I really have a testimony to share? And what is that testimony? So ask yourself, so that's my challenge for all of us. Who knows what God can really do? Who knows? You might be the very last person that's truly shared the gospel with somebody before they take their next breath. Time is but a vapor. It truly is. This could be an opportunity for you to be used 
by God. And that's all I want to do here on earth is just be used by God. I was really encouraged to hear some testimonies last week as we posted them on our social media page. And so uh, if you want to look at those testimonies, uh, those are found on our Facebook page, our church Facebook page. And so uh, Maddie and Bryson Long shared their stories, just a minute long, just a minute long. And so if you want to hear more of their stories, I, I really bet that they would be willing to tell you more of how God has changed their lives and how he's continuing to use them. Go and ask them. Go and ask them. If you're, if, if you're willing to, to share a story and have it posted on our social media page, please come and find me. I want, I want our church to just tell the world our stories this month. And so if you're exploring the faith or maybe you're watching us today and you're like, I don't have a testimony. I've been praying that God will truly give you a testimony. And he can. He can. And so this month, we'll be looking at the power of testimonies all throughout Scripture. I'm not just going to stand here and tell you my story, because it's truly not my story, but it's God's story. And so we'll be looking at some characters in the Bible who were all given stories and how they were used uh, to share their story and how God used them, right? And so if you uh, have a Bible, I encourage you this morning, we're going to be looking at Daniel. So if you have a Bible, I invite you to turn with me to Daniel chapter 1. If you need some help finding the book of Daniel, it's it's in the Old Testament. It's sandwiched in between Ezekiel and Hosea. And if that doesn't help, feel free to just look at the table of contents. And so if you don't have a Bible, I encourage you to use the one in the seat back in front of you. And as always, if you don't own a physical copy of God's Word, just take the one that you're using. So before we dive deep into into today's text, I truly need to pause and pray. Father, I thank you so much for the testimony that you have given me. Father, I thank you for the stories that I hear every day of how you are being glorified. Father, I pray that as we dive deeper into, uh, into this story, Father, I pray that you will just be revealed. Father, I pray that I would not get in the way. I pray that you would just hide me behind your cross. I pray that you would fill this place with your Holy Spirit. I pray that your word would just captivate us and encourage us throughout the week to do what it truly tells us to do. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for giving us grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Daniel chapter 1 says this. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the vessels of the house of God. And he brought them to the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. Then the king commanded Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemish, of good appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace and to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years. And at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them the names. Daniel, he called Belshazzar. Hananiah, he called Shadrach. Mishael, he called Meshach, and Azariah, he called Abednego. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. And God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of eunuchs. 
And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who assigned your food and your drink. For why should he see that you were in worse condition than the youths who are, are, who are your own age? So you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had assigned over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance and the king's appearance of the youths who eat the king's food be observed by you and deal with your servants according to what you see. So he listened to them in this matter, and he tested them for ten days. At the end of ten days, it was seen that they were better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food. So the steward took away their food and wine they, they were to drink and gave them vegetables. As for these four youths, God gave them learning and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams at the end of the time, when the king had commanded that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king spoke with them, and among all of them, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they stood before the king. And in every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were in all his kingdom. And Daniel was there until the first year of King Cyrus. What a story. What a story, truly. I know that's a long text that we read. But man, it's powerful. This is just a glimpse. A very small story within Daniel's overall story. It's just a glimpse of the story. And it's just the beginning. There are multiple ways God used Daniel and his, and his friends' stories. He interpreted dreams. He was even thrown into a lion's den later on. Man, could you imagine truly if you were thrown into a lion's den? His friends were thrown into a fiery furnace. And God gave Daniel visions. In all of this, we can emulate Daniel's faith he had and his trust that he had in the Lord. I encourage you all, if you aren't currently uh, reading Scripture throughout the week, if you don't have a daily Bible reading plan, maybe continue reading in Daniel. Maybe investigate, search deeper into the story of Daniel. Start there. All last month, we focused on 1 Peter. We noticed how Peter was writing to believers as he considered them elect exiles living in the dispersion. Today is all about the testimony in captivity. The testimony while being in captivity. The Israelites are a picture of how we can easily be living in captivity of our own sin. Daniel demonstrates to us how even in the midst of brokenness, even pain, God can use us all for his glory. This shows us how desperately we need Jesus to take us out of the captivity of sin and give us life, eternal life. That's the only thing that I know how to offer today. So, he's, so let's, let's see what, what happens. So first we see that the Lord is the ultimate authority of all stories. The Lord is the ultimate authority of all stories. In verse 2, it says, The Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into Nebuchadnezzar's hand. That's kind of a scary verse if we really think about it. God is a good God. God is a loving God. God is a just God. It would be unloving and unjust if Israel did not go into captivity. Israel was God's chosen people. And they were living in rebellion and worshiping false idols. 
They were following the ways of culture. And they were stuck deep in it. They're saying, no, we don't want to worship the one true God. Let's do what, what these other uh, cultures do. What these other nations do. Let's worship their God. Oh man, they were in a, a severe drought. Let's not pray to the one true God, but let's pray to Baal. Maybe he can provide the rain. Man, we're, we're struggling with, with uh, infertility. Let's pray to the God who can give us fertility, who can bless us with babies. They were stuck deep in this sin. No matter whose story, either Daniel's story, my story, your story, God is at the center of it all. He's supreme over all. In fact, he's the center of all creation. The very first sentence in the Bible describes God as being the main subject of all. In the beginning, God. The beginning wasn't the subject of the text. God is the subject. In fact, Paul describes how all Scripture is breathed out by God while he writes in 2 Timothy 3.16. And so even in captivity, we see God at the center of it all. This is, I, I want you to hear me though. This does not mean that God causes evil in the world. But he's supreme over it all. Satan is on a leash. His power is limited. While Satan's control is limited, this does not mean that he can't influence us how we act, how we think, how we behave, how we feel certain ways. We saw what life was like without God while in captivity. Nebuchadnezzar, he forced those who he thought looked good, and he forced him to learn a certain way. His language, eat the food that he ate, drink the wine that he drank, learn what he taught, go to his school. If we're not careful, our lives can be, be an image of the Israelites being held in captivity and thinking that, that we too have a King Nebuchadnezzar who forces his ways upon us like he did with the Israelites. In our testimonies, there has to be a before Christ experience. If there's not, then you don't have a testimony. Without Christ, you are stuck and overcome by the power of sin, feeling trapped and overwhelmed, nowhere to turn. Scripture is very clear that we've all fallen sin. We, we've all fallen and we've all sinned and fallen way short of the glory of God. And Daniel gives us a picture of hope, though. It says that Daniel, he had it in his heart. Verse 8, he resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. And so he even had the courage to, he asked the chief of eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. He was determined to be obedient to his king rather than King Nebuchadnezzar. How determined are you? God gives favor to the faithful few. Now we don't see a before salvation experience specifically with Daniel in this story. But we see it with Israel. There's not a lot of backstory of actually who Daniel was. All we know that he was a youth from the tribe of Judah during the time when Judah was in exile by the Babylonian Empire. And so God is so good because he gives us freedom to follow him or freedom to reject him. Daniel, he was living with a decision. We have a decision to make every day. Do I remain faithful to God or do I deny him and follow King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of this world? There were other Israelite youths who were chosen by the king. It's not clear how many were chosen by the king. Some estimate this being a large number. Some say it was just a few. But only Daniel and his three friends were mentioned. 
They're highlighted because of their conviction to follow the Lord rather than man. Their faith, it's elevated. In Hebrews 11.6, listen to this. It says, And without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those who draw near to God must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. The youth, besides Daniel and his three friends, they were from the same location. They had all heard heard stories of the one true God. Being in a Christian home, going to church, going to youth camp, those things are all good. As I've mentioned over and over, they will not save you. You can't be a good person and get into heaven. The test is what happens when you leave your home. When you leave your church and go beyond these walls, do you fall into the temptations of the world or do you follow your convictions like Daniel did? Those who followed King Nebuchadnezzar, they lost their first love, the love of of God. They lost their fear that they had. That their God was the creator and sustainer of all. Have you lost your first love? Don't lose your first love in the Lord. Keep going back to it over and over and over again. Remember that time when you first fell in love with the Lord. When God first captivated your heart. When we have high potency. We'll have maximum impact. With the gospel. With the kingdom of God. Don't lose your first love. Because of the faith of Daniel. God gave him favor. Again God is at the center of it all. Then it says that he was tested for 10 days. By eating vegetables and water. He's put to the test, and they were seen to be better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all those who ate the king's food. Now, some people say, I do the Daniel fast, try to lose weight. I think this was for the opposite purpose. (laughs) It says that they looked fatter, right? But anyways, God, again, He's at the center of it all. After this, it says that God gave them learning and skill in all literature. God gives abilities to the faithful. God used Daniel and his three friends for all of his glory. God can use you, whatever gift you have, for all of his glory. Daniel and his three friends' conviction to eat and drink a certain way led to change. It says that the steward even took away their food and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. The whole entire society changed. Our testimonies and following convictions can have a lasting impact on others around us. It even goes to say that God gave them learning and skill, as I mentioned, in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams God is the gift giver of talents all for his glory. He desires, he truly desires to use us, not because, get this, not because he has to, not because he needs to. He's not a needy God, but he truly desires to. It says in Romans 12, 3 through 8, it says, Paul says, for by the grace of God given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, 
having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Paul's very, very clear. Let's use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, he says, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. By God's grace, you and I have been given a testimony. And God grants us gifts to be used. Paul says, do it. Use the gift, whatever God has given you. My dad would tell me, if we were playing a... a while playing baseball, there were some challenging teams that we had to play. And I would get really kind of anxious sometimes. Like, oh man, I don't know. They throw the ball faster. I don't know, they can hit harder. My dad would encourage me. He has a gift of exhortation, or, uh, encouragement. And he would say, Chase, everyone puts pants on the same way. By starting one leg at a time. And our testimonies were not higher than the next person. We have a unique gift that God desires to use. Just like he desired Daniel's learning and skills. Use it all for God's glory. Don't let the ruler of the air try to get you down and discourage you. Remember, going back to last week, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Now, there is a before Christ or a moment when you were being captivated by sin. There's a time when you've been set free from captivity and Daniel demonstrates his freedom by following convictions and the Lord first. In the same way, you should confidently share how God is using you right now. How is God using you? God will give you gifts that he knows you will use all for his glory. If he didn't give you those gifts, then you wouldn't have them. Really quick. We can learn a lot from Daniel. One of the greatest takeaways that I took just from this one chapter was we can learn from the youth's testimony. After the three years, the king spoke with Daniel and his three friends and it says that he found them ten times better in wisdom and in understanding than all the magicians and the enchanters in the kingdom, youth, youth were used for God's glory. Youth are argued how they can be easily swayed or manipulated. Some say that they're immature, they're selfish. They give in easily to trends. Youth are despised and rejected, even in the church. Paul wouldn't have to write to the young pastor Timothy, let no one despise you for your youth in 1 Timothy 4.12 if people didn't despise him. Think about that. Why would Paul even have to write that if, if, if the church didn't despise him because he was young? But he's encouraging them, let, don't, don't give in to that. Don't give in to that, Timothy. Don't let them despise you because you're just young. Daniel could have given in to all of this sin and it could have been a barrier for him, but he didn't. King Nebuchadnezzar decided that he was going to assign youth to eat a certain way, learn a certain way, speak a certain way because he assumed that they would all follow him, that they're easily manipulated. And it might be the case with some youth who are manipulated. The testimony of a youth who stays the course is powerful enough to influence even a king. And this should give all of us in the room who are younger hope. And this should also give us all in the room who 
if I look down right now, I, you can probably tell that I'm turning 30. It should give us all in the room who are losing our hair or who are having uh, gray hairs, it should give us some encouragement as well. That we should listen to youth and learn from them. I heard a really fascinating story this week. Some of you might know this pastor. He's very well known. I wanted to share this story with you. H.B. Charles Jr. He's a pastor at Shiloh Metropolitan Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. And so before being the pastor at this church, he pastored Mount Sinai Baptist Church in Los Angeles, where he learned from his father. Who was the pastor before him? He was called to lead this church at the age of 17. That's young. But he trusted the Lord would use him to shepherd the flock that God has called him. He used his story all for God's glory. And the church was receptive to being led by this young man for 18 years. Some of us are like, man, we get shocked at that. We get shocked, but God can truly use anybody for his glory. Whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're wise or unwise, God can use you. And he desires to use you. He desires to give you a testimony. Let's use it. Even though we've seen just a glimmer of, of the section of the story of Daniel, it oozes the need for the gospel. As Jaden comes up to lead us in one more worship song, I invite us all to respond to God's word this morning. It's good to be reminded of where our story begins. Just like the Israelites, we've all been slaved to sin. There's hope today if you're captivated by sin. If you're truly just overwhelmed God is the author of all stories. He desires for you to place your hope, your faith only in Him. He desires to give you a story even in the midst of being captiv- captivated in this land. Going back to 1 Peter, being considered an elect exile in the dispersion. Throughout the book of Daniel, it shows us the need to have a Savior who we know is Jesus, who came and lived a sinless life, died on a cross and rose again to release us from the captivity of sin and death. Daniel demonstrates to us how when we do not fall trapped into the things of the world and follow the Lord, He will promise to protect us and use us all for His glory. He can use us even whatever stage of life that you're in. You can turn to Him. All of sin fallen short of the glory of God. But the good news is that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, then we will be saved. Time is short. It's fleeting. If this is you. Don't leave today without talking to me. You might not know your very next breath. If you just need to reflect on your testimony or pray during this time, You can do that as well. Maybe you want to practice your 15-second testimony with somebody. Do that right now. I'll be in the back for those who want to make this, uh, make a decision. Your testimony can be used to further Christ's kingdom here at this church. So if if you want to make a decision, I invite you to do that. But let me pray and then let's stand and respond to God's word. Father, I thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for writing a story on our hearts. I pray that we would use this story and go and tell other people what you have done. I pray that we would be reminded that you're the author of all stories, Father. I pray that our stories would just reflect who you truly are. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us grace. In Jesus' name, amen.